Nothing is real but God. Nothing matters but love for God. God is the only reality. All else that seems real is illusory. God and I are one. Meher Baba. Autar Meher Baba ki jai. Thanks to beloved Baba and Jai Baba to all of you. We are reading flowing conversations with the awakener by Bal Natu. But before we do that, a few things to be said. Number one, uh, I do not know how many of you participated in yesterday's, uh, sorry, day before yesterday's, that is Sunday's Hausi, which was hosted by the Bombay Center. It was fun. It was a learning lesson. And uh, Janice is here today to tell us and induce you all to join the quiz next Sunday. See, the most important thing is that we are not here to judge anybody's intelligence about Baba. It's a participation. It is fun. We love to do it. And we get a lot of knowledge from participating in such Baba's activities. Our main uh, focus is that people should know more about Baba. Because Baba himself has said, you know, the more you read me, the more you will know me. And obviously, the more we know Baba, the more we love Baba. So reading is a very integral part, I would say, of loving Baba. So now over to Janice for uh, next Sunday's, coming Sunday's program. She'll give you all the details. Go ahead, Janice. Jai Baba, Jai Baba everyone. Jai Baba. Uh, so, yeah, good evening. Uh, this is an announcement regarding the quiz. So, uh, each year we have the simple uh, quiz where now this year we have the syllabus, which is the uh, drama done by the Bombay Center a few years back called In Search of God. So, we have picked up certain episodes from this drama. It's a beautiful drama. It's kind of a mini uh, Lord Meher, I would say, where everything is covered about life of Meher Baba in various episodes. So we have selected three episodes, that's two, five, and seven, as you see here. So uh, you all you have to do is, now each episode is divided into two parts, because the episodes are uh, an hour or some uh, time. So two parts for each episode. The link of the same will be shared with you, or is already shared with you via WhatsApp messages, text message. We have sent it via text message because it is easy to just click on that uh, link and the video will open up. So you just have to go through the uh, drama uh, and there are three rounds of the quiz. First will be the question answer round, second will be the audio visual round and third will be the mixed background. So all you have, each, each, each question and each round would have uh, uh, multiple choice questions. Now multiple choice questions means four answers are given out of which one will be correct and three will be wrong. So you just have to see the question and guess the answer or know the answer. And you just have to write it down for your reference. You don't have to announce your answer. You don't have to share your answer. So no need to fear, no need to be nervous about it. You just have to uh, understand the question in case you are not able to go through the videos for any reason. No worries, you can still participate because the questions are simple. There are certain video clippings we'll be showing. There are certain audios we'll be showing. So it'll be overall a very interesting uh, way of knowing about Meher Baba. So I would request all to participate um, this Sunday for the quiz. And in case you have any questions, then you can uh, connect with either Saira Sankar or me or Rakesh or whoever, and we'll guide you through it. So uh, the first we'll show you the question, and then after 15 seconds, we'll show you the answer. And you just have to test yourself. You don't have to... <laughs> or really be nervous about if it's right or wrong. It's just you and Baba who knows what you've written. So thank you, Uncle. Have I missed out anything? No, thank you. You, you said everything. 
Janice. Okay, so Very quiz good. is Very going good. to be conducted by Cyrus Uncle. And you, as you know, he's going to share a lot of information of each question. So <laughs> looking forward to that too, okay? Yeah, it's so, been conducted by Mernosh uh, and myself. Mernosh, Am I right? Correct, Mernosh and uh, Mernosh. Cyrus Uncle. Yeah, okay. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, Dennis. Thank, Thank you very much. Thank you. Jai Baba. Jai Baba. Jai Baba. All right. So, we would urge you to participate. It's a participation. It's not a competition. Nobody will know whether you got the correct answer or not. The idea is that you go through all these three episodes, two, five, and seven. They are rather longish, but then it's fun. It's just you're watching the drama, and uh, you'll know all the more about that was the one thing I wanted to say before. The second thing is, I received a WhatsApp message from none other than my very dear brother, Merchan Nori. Garu. Uh, Mer okay, Garu. Merchan, <laughs> Merchan Garu Nori, where he writes, and I, I, I quote, Jai Meher Baba, exactly 63 years ago, that is on 12th April, 1959, I was fortunate to have my first darshan of my beloved Baba along with my late uncle M.S.R. Shastri, whose name was inscribed on Memorial Tower, Mehrabad. I was very fortunate having, having touched lotus feet of beloved Baba and our beloved Baba was very compassionate to touch my cheeks. He always loves me more than I love him. When I asked him, should I share it? In the group, he was quiet about it. He has not answered. So I take it that that silence means assent. That means he's wanting me to. He's not there on the screen. The important thing is the entire Nori family. We have Ram Nori over here. Are so fortunate that Baba had been to their place. That one of the family members' name is in the memorial, which is a which is a great thing, and. The Nori family is stuck on to Baba. We have seen so many families where the head of the families were Baba lovers, but then later on, the son, the daughters, you know, the other family members, they just you know walk away. And sometimes the grandchildren then again come to Baba's school. But here we have a family who has really held on to Baba's Raman with both hands. So uh, I just wanted to share this and congratulations to the Nori family. Now we start with the reading, and today is um, Dhuni day, although the Dhuni is marked at 6.30 for 6.30. We'll see if we can uh, maybe stop at about 6.20 or 25 or whatever. So if people want to go there, they can always uh, go over there after finishing this session. So now we are reading page number 110 of Flowing Conversations with the Awake. Go ahead. <clears throat> Magnifying authority. I had quarreled over a very small, insignificant matter with a co-worker whom I supervised. I had asked him to carry out his duty involving a particular task. After reminding him several times that I wanted it done by a certain time and in a certain way, he still did not follow my simple request. There was no real urgency to the task and had it not been accomplished for us, it would not have mattered, but my thwarted expectations lit the flame of authority in me. I erupted in anger at the person. Why was this not done? How many times do I have to ask for you to get it right? Later, I was in my room fuming over the incident. I was upset that I had reacted the way I did I felt frustrated by my co-worker's negligence. In the midst of this drama, you stepped into the room. Seeing me pacing, you asked, what made you lose your temper? I'm in a bad mood because of an argument I had with someone at work over an assignment. It must have been very important. Actually, it was quite trivial. But as his supervisor, I felt let down because it wasn't done the way I asked. Was it really necessary that it be done as you requested? You inquired. Not really, but it was obvious I wanted it done in a particular way. This lapse was a sign of disrespect. 
do you feel so superior in position education or intelligence that any breach of your expectations is a sign of disrespect no that's not what i meant i said shaking my head with a tinge of remorse so i'll be reading this again many of us face this aspect that what as i had said earlier that what causes dissentment what causes arguments debates quarrels is not the objective aspect of anything it is the subjective aspect that means the i is hurt the ego is hurt how dare you do this without telling me or whatever or how dare you do it in a different manner you know we try to snatch that authority and say that this is the only way to do that particular thing as i had repeated earlier you know when they are saying you know this is my way what is your way there is no the way we try to take the authority that this is the only way in which you are supposed to do whatever say jharu poja or in this way you are supposed to do dusty or this way you are supposed to wash clothes or fold clothes or in an office environment this is the way this has to be done although it's very trivial but because i said it i want it done in my way and if a subordinate does not do it that means my ego is thwarted my desire is thwarted something came in between what i am saying and not being done and that makes me angry it is such a trivial thing the moment we understand that it is not the thing which is making me angry it is the prick to my own ego that makes me fume with anger then automatically things may change so here again i am reading sorry all right somi is asking then what is the point in giving order well i am digressing a little bit my personal i am i am telling my generally i do not give orders to anybody because i know there are different ways in which a same thing can be done so i don't as long as the thing is done i am happy but when i give an order is very very they are talking very personal i ensure that it is done and before i give an order i make the person understand that this is the reason why i would like you to do in this particular fashion and not in that particular way or whatever that is so that's how i would do but different people have different attitudes different ways of functioning different ways of interacting with different people especially the subordinates we say that i said it do it this way now the other person may be able to do it in a better way but no i said it so do it that way so that's how no, i will within the time thing that to be done correct okay let me let me let me read this i had quarreled over a very small the very the very first sentence says he is confessing that it's a very small insignificant matter with a coworker who my supervise now if you, if you understand if we understand it's small insignificant then why should i fume see the the trigger point is not the work is not the time is not anything it is i the trigger point is that i have been neglected i my orders have not been obeyed and therefore i get agitated and fume i had quarreled over a very small insignificant matter with a coworker who my supervisor i had asked him to carry out his du- uh, duty involving a particular task after reminding him several times that i wanted it done by a certain time and in a certain way he did not follow my simple request there are, there was no real urgency to the task again you are saying that there was no real urgency to the task and had it not matter. been and had it not been accomplished for hours it would not have mattered but my thwarted expectation what what thwarted my expectations lit the flame of authority in me yes if if time if time is of essence mm. to any contract mm. then definitely i would insist that it should be done within a certain time but here he is himself confessing 
that the time was not of essence at all. Right? I erupted in anger at the person. Why was this not done? How many times do I have to say this for you to get it? Later, I was in my room fuming over the incident. I was upset that I had reacted the way I did and felt frustrated by my co-workers negligence. In the midst of this drama, you stepped into the room. Seeing me pacing, you asked, what made me lose my temper? Baba says, you know, the anger in, in discourse is Baba says that anger is a result of thwarted desires. You desire something that has not happened and you get angry. When you get angry, this is not in Baba's discourse, but this is what I have conjured. When you get angry, it is something like you are throwing a burning charcoal on somebody. But when you are throwing it on somebody to hurt somebody, you are yourself holding it for some time, isn't it? So in other words, anger hurts us more than to whom it has been hurled. So we need to be very discreet. We need to be very poised. We need to be very balanced before we uh, embark upon this aspect of anger. You step into the room. Is mental. Somia is asking whether uh, anger is a subtle energy or a mental energy. Baba talks about three citadels of Maya lust, greed, anger. Lust concerns the physicality, gratification of senses. Greed concerns the subtle, and anger uh, uh, is, is related to the mental. So that's it. Thank you. All right. What made you lose your temper? I'm in a bad mood because of an argument I had with someone at work over an assignment. Now, again, I'm digressing. If we come to the level of our subordinate and fight and argue and debate, and yet he is indifferent to it, what, what have we taught the other person? We have taught the other person that you can treat me like very like shabbily and I'll just shout and the shouting is over and everything is over. There's a, there's a sentence in English which says, you get treated in life the way you teach people to treat you. And if you do not like the way you are being treated, then you must teach them otherwise. Many times we ourselves through our actions or even subtle actions, you know, not even speaking, but very subtly, we are conveying a message to the other person to treat us badly. If I am treated, let us say, shabbily at my home front, at my office front, at my business front, at my family front, at my society where I live front, everywhere I am being treated in a particular manner, then be sure that something lies with me, that I have taught all these people to teach me like that. I'm sorry, to treat me like that. So if I'm not happy with that, obviously I have to teach them in some other manner. And this is definitely not the correct thing to come down to the level of the subordinate and shout and, and say all kinds of things. The person is indifferent. The person is unconcerned. The person is unaffected. What have you taught him? Oh, boss is just screaming and shouting. That is his habit. Just take it from one year and remove it from the other year. Don't bother about it. That's what we are teaching. You see, so coming back to the reading, I'm in a bad mood because of an argument I had with someone at work over an assignment. It must have been very important. The awakener is asking, it must have been very important. Actually, it was quite trivial. But as his supervisor, I felt let down because it wasn't done the way I asked. See, the I comes in. Was it really necessary? that it be done as you requested, you inquired. Not really, but it was obvious. I wanted it done in a particular way. His lapse was a sign of disrespect. See, respect can never be demanded or commanded. Respect is to be earned. Automatically, naturally, spontaneously, other people start respecting you because of who you are and what you are and how you treat other people. 
it cannot be demanded i am the boss now you must respect me sit up you know sit down and get up and all that it never works it, it can work temporarily but it's not a long run solution and it's not from the heart they do it because they have some kind of uh, majboori as we say they are supposed to do it that's why they do it helplessness do you feel so superior in position education or intelligence that any breach of your expectation is a sign of disrespect no that's not what i meant i i said shaking my head with a tinge of remorse did, did you read this <clears throat> but aren't you looking for respect from others to bring you inner satisfaction you asked with loving intensity as long as there is even a subconscious ripple of such desires for respect <clears throat> satisfaction will continue to elude you deep within you long for respect from others though outwardly you may cultivate an appearance of being humble and unfaced i can see now that my self esteem had been hurt by my co-workers behavior i admitted consoling me you said sometimes when people show you respect it makes you feel good about yourself but you need not concern yourself with trying to be special to others when you feel hurt by behavior you find disrespectful no in your heart that you are special to me all are special to me i was moved by your statement and felt the truth of your words your love poured through me dissipating my anger at my coworker but then a question came to me and i couldn't restrain myself from voicing my confusion what is so wrong in wishing that my work be done in a certain way is it only a wish sometimes you what you express as a wish is really a craving when you are meant to have something it automatically comes to you if your expectations were only a wish and your wish had not been granted you wouldn't have gotten angry you erupted in anger because you didn't get what you craved it's not really a matter of respect then is it so beautifully baba is now distinguishing between craving for respect craving that it be done in a certain respect and not certain just way. in a in a certain way and not just a mere wish okay i wish that you do it this way so there is a camouflaging there is a covering up of my ego and craving and i am just saying oh this is how i wanted it done <clears throat> another sentence that comes to my mind i don't think it's from baba's literature i think it's from buddha's lord buddha <clears throat> if you feel hurt comma no it is your ego i think it's very powerful the what gets hurt when i say i am feeling very hurt what is it that is feeling hurt it is the ego that is feeling feeling hurt and when i mean ego i mean the false ego right so and baba is here as a super surgeon to really cut our false ego and if you see the mandalis behavior you know they never erupted they never you know they were not the type you know they would never show their authority i am eraj i am adi i am bow i am saying so you do it no they have always been humble they have always been mild and tame them baba tame them so we baba is taming us also mm -hmm. with all these uh, you know episodes, episodes. so your <clears throat> but aren't you looking for respect from others to bring you inner satisfaction what does respect give us a sense of satisfaction somebody is respectful to you and baba has, you know because i am i am something somebody something doing good work some you know no in fact in 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 uh, in my dear workers the message that baba gave in november 1962 at the east west gathering one sentence which is again very powerful is the more you work for baba the less important you feel in yourself i repeat the more you work for baba the less important 
you feel in yourself. In other words, if any of us, any of us, including myself, if I'm working for Baba, if I'm doing something for Baba, and I feel that, oh, I'm so important without me, this cannot happen over. Because here the I, the ego comes in. And Baba had said another sentence in the same message, you know, that if that I comes in between the work, you know, then you allow the work to take you away from me. That means the very work that we are doing for Baba in the assumption, in the presumption that I am doing something great, that very work will take me away from Baba because that ego is there. These are Baba's words in a very strongly worded document called My Dear Workers, which was given on, I think, November 3rd or 4th, I'm not very sure, 1962 at the East-West Gathering at, at Guru Prasad. So we need to be very, very cautious when we are doing anything for Baba. All right. So, but aren't you looking for respect from others? To bring, your in, to bring you inner satisfaction. I am satisfied. People are giving me applause. People are giving me a standing ovation. People are coming in, in huge numbers when I talk. But if somebody else talks, very few people are coming. All that egocentric calculations have no meaning. Most importantly, you feel that Baba is speaking through you. That's important. And you are just doing whatever Baba wants you to do and offer the results to Baba. Don't bother about what is happening thereafter. You ask with loving intensity. As long as there is even a subconscious ripple, ripple you understand, just a little halchal, a subconscious ripple of such desires for respect, satisfaction will continue to elude you. Because the moment you feel satisfied with somebody giving you an applause, it automatically means that the moment somebody will ridicule you, somebody will criticize you, you will go down the dumps. So Baba expects us to be very, very equanimous, poised, irrespective of what happens, you are doing your job as best as you can, feeling that it is Baba who is doing through you, and then leave the results to Baba without being affected in a very, very uh, detached manner. Deep within, you long for respect from others. Though outwardly, you may cultivate an appearance of being humble and unfazed. You may show that you are unfazed, you are not bothered, you are very poised, but this is all apparent. I can see now that my self-esteem had been hurt in my co-workers, by my co-workers' behavior. So the self-esteem, the respect is hurt. Consoling me, you said. Sometimes when people show you respect, it makes you feel good about yourself. But you need not concern yourself with trying to be special to others. When you feel hurt by behavior, you find disrespectful. Know in your heart that you are special to me all are special to me. In other words, what Baba is trying to convey in my interpretation is, your job is to do what Baba would expect, expect you to do. You are answerable to Baba. You are responsible to Baba. You have nothing, you have no concern with the other. How many people came, what they said, whether they were respectful, whether they were disrespectful, whether they praised you, whether they criticized you is none of your concern because you are dear to me. So here Baba says, know in your heart that you are special to me and all are special to me, all are dear to me because all in, in a sense, it is Baba only who is, who is working through each one of us. I was moved by your statement. Sorry? Okay, Swamiya is saying that it was given on 3rd of November 1962, my dear workers at the East West Gathering. Thank you. I was moved by your statement and felt the truth of your words. Your love poured through me, dissipating my anger at my co worker. The anger is being dissipated, you know, it's over with. But then a question came to me 
and I couldn't restrain myself from voicing my confusion. What is so wrong in wishing that my work be done in a certain way? What's the wrong? What is wrong in it? So now Baba, being a super specialist surgeon, is dissecting. You know, as we say, dissecting, bisecting our inner self, our inner mind. You know, was it really a wish, or were you really craving? And you are you're masquerading. You can mm. say masquerading your craving as if it is just an innocent wish. Is it only a wish? Sometimes what you express as a wish is really a craving. When you are meant to have something, it automatically comes to you. Again, a very important sentence. If you are meant to come uh, to get something in life, means if it is destined for you to get something in life, it will automatically come to you, whether you make an effort or not. It will effortlessly, automatically, spontaneously, naturally come to you. What you are meant to have, when you are meant to have something, it automatically comes to you. If your expectations were only a wish and your wish had not been granted, you wouldn't have gotten angry. That means if it was just a wish, you would have accepted it as Baba's will, God's will, whatever it is, and would not have bothered about it. It would never have triggered you to become so fuming with anger. You erupted in anger because you didn't get what you craved. It's not really a matter of respect then, is it? Is it a matter of respect? No. You had craving. Did you read this? Okay. I could say nothing in response. With a sigh, I sank down into my chair. You sat across from me and continued. When you link your expectations to your desire for respect, you are using respect as a way of getting others to do what you want. Very small events look greatly <clears throat> exaggerated through the magnifying glass of your feelings of authority over others resulting in indignation and anger. Don't expect others to respect you or recognize you. Real respect comes unasked. Pondering your words, I responded, even if I don't bring up the issue of respect inwardly, I feel critical of the person's actions. When you erupt in anger, feeling condemnation toward someone, do you think that you are incapable of committing a similar error? Haven't you been negligent in the past? My heart sank to my knees. I regretted the way I have spoken to my colleague. I felt ashamed before you. Okay, I will go step by step. So again, a very important paragraph. <clears throat> I could say nothing in response. What a sigh. I sank down into my chair because Baba... With a sigh. With a sigh. Baba is very clear that it was not just a wish. It was your craving. And because your craving was not satisfied, you get hurt. You were asking for respect, which was not given. And therefore, you the only way out is to erupt into a fume of anger. <clears throat> You sat across from me and continued. When you link your expectations to your desire for respect, I'm linking my expectation with my desire for respect. It is not just my wish. It is not just an expectation. It is linked with desire for respect. You are using respect as a way of getting others to do what you want. That means, in other words, you are using that, you know, I want people to do it the way I want it. And in that way, you are creating a self-respect from others. Very small events look greatly exaggerated through the magnifying glass of your feelings of authority over others, resulting in indignation and anger. So here, a very beautiful uh, thought process is that the event per se, the event objectively as such is so trivial, is so insignificant 
it doesn't matter really had it been done this way or that way but because it is linked with your self respect it it assumes a disproportionately big you know uh, uh, you know uh, it makes it it magnifies see how, how beautifully baba says very small events that means trivial events insignificant events looks greatly exaggerated through the magnifying glass of your feelings of authority over others <clears throat> when i want to have a feeling of authority over others then the smallest of things seem very big and exaggerated because it is going through the magnifying glass of that authority resulting in indignation indignation would mean disgust and anger don't expect others to respect you or recognize you real respect comes unasked the moment you command respect you demand respect the respect is lost it has to come spontaneously unasked from the others pondering your words i responded even if i don't bring up the issue of respect inwardly i still feel critical of the person's actions so he says okay i am not forget about respect but i still feel that the way it was done was not correct when you erupt in anger feeling condemnation towards someone do you think that you are incapable of committing a similar error haven't you been negligent in the past <clears throat> we had done this earlier that when someone whom we dislike does something wrong it gets magnified into so many times you know and we are harsh we we really you know we hog on to him we really give him a piece of our mind but the, if the same type of error is done by somebody whom we love husband wife mother father mother in law sister daughter in law children would you react in the same way no that means here baba is asking totally different haven't you ever committed such a blunder in the past you have so everyone is capable of making a mistake so why do you jump on that person is simply because that person did not respect you. so when you are in love with other person we ignore we neglect we forgive we tolerate we give in isn't it can't we do the same thing with others no why because we are not seeing the incident or event or occurrence or happening objectively we are not seeing it objectively we are seeing it vis a vis my association with that person my relationship with that person he is a subordinate i am the boss so i am supposed to hound him something like that haven't you been negligent in the past my heart sank to my knees i regretted the way i had spoken to my colleague i felt ashamed before you you read this when you are overwhelmed by critical thoughts of others remember this <clears throat> it's good practice to express only that which you would feel free to say in front of anyone when you criticize something in others then <clears throat> you draw those qualities to yourself you may even find yourself acting in the same ways that you condemn there was nothing sorry and this is something very new and different just like how when you slander somebody when you backbite somebody baba says that you draw negative karmas of that person ninda hamari jo kare dost hamara hoye bin sabun bin pani mail hamara hoye right so if somebody is doing ninda back biting of us he is he is actually taking our bad karma but your baba talks that even when you have critical thoughts about others when you are overwhelmed by critical thoughts about others remember this it's good practice to express only that which you feel free to say in front of any one that means if i want to condemn somebody i must not condemn him or i must not say negative things about him in his absence because when i say it in his absence baba says i am actually drawing those bad karmas towards me so baba says here 
when you criticize something in others then you draw those qualities to yourself you may even find yourself acting in the same way that you condemn because now those karmas are yours so you will be behaving or reacting in the same way a very important factor in terms of not condemning or not saying things behind somebody's back you can see on the face of course you can see that's what baba says there was nothing i could say i simply nodded my head not allowing yourself to be affected by others behavior doesn't mean you have to agree with them even if you disagree strive to go beyond the judgments of who is right or wrong if you can remember me in those moments you will experience a deeper level of awareness in my remembrance gradually the panorama of your inner dimension changes providing a new perspective that i am the cause behind all actions including the ones you disagree with so it was you who delayed the work <laughs> i said with a hint of mischief your glance conveyed the kernel of your meaning even before your words as i saw loving reassurance pouring out from your eyes resigning myself to the outcome of any particular wish and accepting it as my will opens you to the deeper promptings of your heart then you realize that each one becomes the recipient of what one has the capacity to receive this will draw you closer to purity of body mind and heart the possibility of that purity inspired me with a longing to put your words into practice and i implore you help me to not look to others for respect but to look only to you for my inner satisfaction remember how very special you are to me the only thing that matters is what you are in my eyes saying this you departed i continued to sit quietly in my chair remembering all that you had shared the transforming power of your presence had affected my very being and the feeling of your unconditional acceptance of me lingered on i reflected on my actions and the lessons of the morning i realized that in whatever i do i need not be adamant but simply confident my feelings took shape in words may my life be heart based may i open to change when directed by my heart may i follow you with self confidence centered in humility and in your presence which one okay so we have done this that whenever we feel critical about anybody whatever you want to say say it on the face if you can tone down what you want to convey if you are a little what you can say diplomatic about conveying your thoughts and feelings to others do it that way because that is how we have seen the mandali behaving with each one between themselves and also with each one of us so there is a there is a way there is a pratha there is a manner in which you can convey what you have in your heart in a manner that it doesn't hurt the other person's feelings so your baba says that if you do back biting or slandering you are actually inviting those negative karmas towards you and you might find that you yourself are behaving in the manner like how the other was behaving the one whom you have condemned why because now you have sourced all that negative karma into yourself there was nothing wrong sorry there was nothing i could say i simply nodded my head not allowing yourself to be affected by others behavior doesn't mean that you have to agree with them there's a nice sentence which says you know that you agree to disagree you can disagree but when you disagree with anybody there's no need that, that you should have a fight or you should have a debate or you should uh, call words call names of somebody as no you simply say that well, this is your view and this is my view and it's perfectly okay we are now agreeing to disagree on a particular issue it's very important to understand in life 
that we should try to make our life issue based and not you know what should i say personal based now if somebody let's say i'll just give an example if i have brought out an issue in a meeting of say so many people that this is my idea this is my thought and somebody says rubbish now that rubbish is said not to me rubbish is said to my idea i should be matured enough to understand that that rubbish doesn't pertain to me it pertains to the idea and i should not take it to heart and leave it at that okay this is what i felt but the majority of the people did not feel it that way so be it it's fine but what creates the problem is that we do not take consideration of issue based you know we take the person based like <clears throat> if somebody has said something rubbish or absolute idiotic nonsense or <clears throat> i think that he is telling me nonsense and that i feel hurt and when i feel hurt every time i encounter this person i am not on the same wavelength i don't see him through fresh spectacles as we have done last time you know i see him with a spectacle of disgust with a spectacle of he is no good he doesn't understand me he has no brains or whatever whatever you know? he said it so what i'm trying to say is if we are mature in, in in office environment in home environment in the residential cause society that we have all these issues coming up so if we understand a matured person would only fight or discuss or debate on issues and nothing to do with the person the moment the meeting is over you you join hands you shake hands you hug each other you say okay forget about it so that should be the principle in life then you will not feel hurt then you will not carry forward then you will not carry forward anything that somebody else has said okay correct not allowing yourself to be affected by others behavior doesn't mean that you have to agree with them no it doesn't mean that you can disagree even if you disagree strive to go beyond the judgments of who is right or wrong many times we are stuck up in this is right this is wrong this is good this is bad this is virtuous this is vice no go beyond all these things because each one will see the issue from the angle at which the other person is placed he will see it from that place i will see it from other place the common example is a figure 6 if you see it from 6 year to 6 if you see it from the top it is like 9 and both are right so it is not necessary that somebody has to be right and somebody has to be wrong so go beyond judgment that's what baba is trying to say strive to go beyond the judgments of who is right or wrong if you can remember me in those moments very important every moment whether we agree whether we disagree if we have the companionship of our beautiful master in our heart you know baba in our heart if we have his companionship if we remember him then the entire scenario changes the way we respond the way we the, the way things go it entirely changes remembrance okay sorry if if you can remember me in those moments you will experience a deeper level of awareness your awareness level goes very deep where you are unaffected even if most people disagree to what you are saying it doesn't mean anything to you in my remembrance gradually the panorama of your inner dimension changes providing a new perspective externally nothing may change but internally an entire entirely new dimension of perspective will open up within us whereby we will be able to attend to whatever we needs to we need to attend in a very impactful manner in a very poised manner in a very tranquil and quiet manner in my remembrance gradually the panorama of your inner dimension changes providing a new perspective that i am the cause behind all actions including the ones you disagree with because when we have enthroned baba in our heart the way we look at others the way we interact with others the way we respond with others will be totally different 
we will be able to appreciate the other person's point of view knowing full well that it is baba in him or her that is initiating that particular <clears throat> dialogue or discussion or debate so it was you who delayed the work now mischievously i said with a hint of mischief your glance conveyed the kernel of your meaning even before your words as i saw loving reassurance pouring out from your eyes resigning yourself to the outcome of any particular wish and accepting it as my will opens you to the deeper promptings of your heart this is we have been doing it over and over again that in any situation that we are in think and feel honestly and sincerely that baba has placed me in this situation and that baba is doing things through me that as baba says when you work for me that it is the most important thing in your life that you hone in all your capabilities and abilities abilities in and at the end of the work be resigned totally be detached completely to whatever the results may be knowing full well that whatever will be the results will be according to my wish and will if we do that in our moment to moment day to day activities wherever we may be automatically a new vista of perception will open within us where we will always be in a state of equipoise in a state of equanimity in a state of poise where things outside of us will not ruffle us too much it won't affect us it won't bother us we are so deeply entrenched and anchored in this conviction that everything around me is happening happening according to baba's wish and will so who am i to go against it i am perfectly okay with that i am perfectly resigned to baba's wish and will this will draw you closer to purity of body mind and heart things will not ruffle you things will not bother you things will not disturb you the possibility of that purity inspired me with a longing to put your words into practice the most important thing we always say and i keep repeating you it is not the speaking it is not the listening it is not the understanding it is not the you know whatever it, what is most important is how are we how successful are we to put whatever we are learning in these sessions into our moment to moment living are we living baba's words or are we just speaking and listening to baba's words that makes the world of difference i may say anything i may say all all kinds of intellectual gymnastics but that will have no meaning if i don't put it into practice to put your words into practice and i implore you help me to not look to others for respect but to look only to you for my inner satisfaction we had said this earlier that i am responsible only to baba i am answerable only to baba my job is only to please baba and not to please a b c d once we are at that point then nothing by and large nothing distracts you nothing disturbs you remember sorry remember how very special you are to me and i would like to be a little pompous enough to say that we all are extremely special to baba the only thing that matters is what you are in my eyes saying this you departed in other words in somewhere else baba had said you know it is not what the world thinks about you that matters it is not what the world thinks about you that matters it is what god knows about you that matters so in other words world may think about us maybe in a, on a positive side you know i am projecting myself when i say i all of us you know in a good light but i may not be so internally so in the, on on the opposite side the world may be thinking of me as a rascal as a vagabond as a this as a that it doesn't matter what the world thinks about us what matters is what baba knows about us saying this you departed 
I continued to sit quietly in my chair, remembering all that you have shared. The transforming power, very important. What is important is that we need to transform ourselves based on Baba's words, bit by bit, bit by bit, not overnight, all of a sudden. The transforming power of your presence had affected my very being and the feeling of your unconditional acceptance of me lingered on. Baba's has accepted us unconditionally. Whoever we are, whatever we are, the good, the bad, the ugly, the very fact that we got to know of Baba's name and his form and we are so closely connected with Baba means that he has accepted us unconditionally. I reflected on my actions and the lessons of the morning. I realized that in whatever I do, I need not be adamant, but simply confident. There's a difference between being confident, being assertive, and being aggressive. My feelings took shape in words. May my life be heart-based. Let me let my life be based on the feelings I get in my heart and not the thoughts I get in my mind. May I be open to change because people suffer because they are not open to change. Change is the only thing that is constantly happening in life. And we, if we stick on to something, one thing, we are bound to suffer. Once we are free flowing and once we adapt ourselves to change, it doesn't bother us. You know, like a person who knows the art of surfing the wave or he's enjoying the wave. A person doesn't want to go up and down in life. He gets drowned because he doesn't want to change. He clings on to one particular stance. May I be open to change when directed by my heart. May I follow you with self-confidence. That means let me have the self-confidence of knowing that whatever you are doing for me will be good for me. Self-confidence centered in humility and in your presence. Let me be humble and let me always feel your presence within me. Jai Baba. Anybody has anything to share, ask? We still have about three minutes to go. But as I said, 6.30 is the Dhuni time. I would like to let you go to the Dhuni if you wish to. So I think we end the session. Thank you, all of us. Autar Meher Baba Ki Jai. Thank you, beloved Baba. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Sign a, sign a yes, 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 go ahead. When you go, uh, thank you, thank you for reading the note from Meher. Yeah. And um, you, know, you said uh, it's not my you know, parents' generation, but we also followed him. When yes. the Lord Himself has assured your mother that He is the Father, He'll take care of it. Yes, uh, you know, then you'll do that. Great. Great, great. Yeah, thank you. Lucky, 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 fortunate, fortunate. Thank you, Ram. Thank, thank you. you. Okay. Thanks, everybody, and thank you, beloved Baba. Avatar Meher Baba Ki Jai. Jai Baba. Thank you.